well good day. thanks for joining me and oh this is a comfortable chair I guess you look a little bit far away from me and oh my hair is never perfect it's just fucking ah oh, I'm so sick of it I'm gonna shave it off so here's what well, I guess I'm going to have to use illustrations and diagrams to show you poor unfortunate globe earth believers a few truths yeah I've tried using logic I've tried explaining things in simple terms for you, but you just keep going, yeah, but gravity, of course, Earth is, looks as though it's hardly moving at all from a distance, if you could view it from a distance, but we're not viewing it from a distance, we're on the Earth, and if it's spinning at a thousand miles per hour, it's still a thousand miles per hour irrespective now you say yes but it's like being inside a fast moving train moving that speed the logic behind that thinking is like so stupid it makes me want to pick up that baby Jesus and make him cry okay maybe not that much but it still makes him cry. Well, it would have 2,000 years ago. Had he thought people would ever be that stupid. A vacuum in space. So, I've allowed me to use a few props here today. Here we have a duck. It's enclosed within. There's a heap of goodies within it. Let me just move that out of the way because that's not hard. We need. This is basically the concept of the flat earth. You can see it's flat. The earth is like the piece of wood. In fact, if you say anything full of water on it, I don't really have anything full of water to put on it. Camera, sit, good camera. But if I did, well, you'd probably see the water would also be flat and level. Like I have a beer here, I guess. You probably cannot see it, but see that? That's called beer level. Beer level is basically the same thing as water level. It's level. It doesn't curve. If I put it on the side here, doesn't matter where it goes. See how it's still level? I move it up. Still level. Put it around the side. If I went to put it under the table, like you'd believe on a ball earth, like that orange there, it'd fall out. Now, I know you ballers, you know, you've got an answer for everything. You say, yeah, but the mass of the earth is big enough. It has its gravity. And that's what holds the water upside down on it. You can't argue with things you can't prove, can you, I suppose, because, well, you science boffins, you just got gravity. So that can make water. Curve around your orange. Now, so the concept, I guess this might help, of the flat earth is that the sun is potentially moving around like so in a, in a day or perhaps there's another concept is that the sun is hanging there from the sky like say that's the sun up there and as I twist this around slowly slowly over 24 hours then various parts of it get illuminated while well, say other parts well, there is another light source over that way. So it's 
not helpful for the demonstration to show you how it works. But if it was spinning, as you would imagine, the center would be the North Pole. Now, how do compasses work? Magnetism. What about this for an idea? What if the center, the North Pole, was like the spokes on a wheel, for example, or even spinning around on a string, but because it's floating on water, all they're really doing is pointing away from the center point, like spokes on a wheel, and the circumference of the wheel is south, so here's your Antarctica. And because it's a massive, big, enclosed dome, it gets really cold away from the sun, which is actually an orb. It's a... Let's say what it is. It's one of God's greatest angels. It is Lucifer, the light bringer. And it travels around and around inside the dome, but the further away from it, on the outer edges, it gets really icy and that's where all the water that evaporates eventually falls back down and that's why the sky looks blue because it's covered in ice because it's so far away from it and as every now and then ice sheets even fall off in places in the middle of the desert they've got a word for that too apparently but basically big chunks of ice can fall off out of out of perimeter and maybe it is coming from outside, and that's why sea level keeps rising. It's got nothing to do with global warming. It's got to do with more water entering in from the outer perimeter. As we all know, once Gondwana land was massively big land mass, where Tasmania was still attached to Australia, and that was before we invented the internal combustion engine. So... Anyway, an atmosphere, no matter how fast I move this while it's closed, the air inside it will move with it as though it's perfectly still like it would, say if you're in a flying aeroplane moving 500 miles an hour. You can throw a plane from one end of it to the other and vice versa, as though the plane isn't moving. That's because it's all within an enclosed system. But when you're sitting on the roof of the plane it's not enclosed and if it's moving at 500 miles per hour and you tried to flow, throw a plane from one end to the other you just get blasted in your face and it gets sucked off behind a million miles an hour I'm not ready to lift the lid off that yet I want to just show a basic really fucking simple concept of how we cannot be on a ball spinning around the sun and so for that obviously that's why I've got my props here even though they're not done the scale we all know that but we can use our imaginations let's just take this dome off for now because we'll use that again later maybe Here's the sun. It looks like an orange, but the sun is kind of orange looking. We'll get back to that later too. Here's the earth. It's the apple. It's the original fruit. It's got a south pole, a north pole, and it's got a dot. That dot there, that represents you. You're that dot. You might not be on the equator, and you might be tilted at 66 point sorry 23.4 degrees which is 90 minus 23.6 here's your dot right and so at midday you're facing the sun we can tell that's the sun because the earth travels around the sun and the camera falls but that's cool we can just pick that up and start again the earth travels around the sun. It takes a whole year to end up back here where it is. But what it also does, how we get day and night, where's your little dot again? How about I just try and find a pen? Here's one I prepared earlier. There we go. 
that's so we can't lose track of our dot. You can see where you are, that's Australia. Or it's New York, doesn't really matter, it's the big apple. Here it is as you're spinning on your 66.6 .6 degree rotation on your tilt. And as you travel around the sun, that's how you get the seasons, of course, because you're always on your tilt. But you're tilting as though the Earth has a pencil through it. And it's 24 hours. Okay, you're still with me here? 24 hours. That's one day. And here we are, midday again, 12 p.m., facing the sun. That's how we know it's midday. But it's 24 hours every single day. It's measured by a mechanical timepiece, a clock. It's not measured by sundials anymore where they first came up with this crazy idea we're spinning on a ball going around the sun. It's a mechanical clock, a physical, fixed, exact timepiece. So every time you spin around 24 hours, your little dot here is facing the exact same spot. So as it comes around here, three months later, it's actually facing pretty much not exactly at the sun anymore, is it? Every time it spins around, 24 hours by the time it's all the way around the other side here your little fucking dot is still facing there of course because that's where it's always been facing from when it was here it's facing there 24 hours on every single rotation is now facing over there the sun is still sitting in the middle where you are now midday according to the clock is the middle of the night according to the sun and it's now 12 midnight facing the sun but that never happens does it now if you can't understand the logic of that then that is why you are a globe head you cannot understand physics and logic that simple now the other one that you guys keep going on and on about which drives you drives me nuts is about, of course you're going to see the same stars. Here's the sun. When you're at this part of the sun, at night time then obviously it's facing over here, those are the stars you're seeing over there. When you're over here, those are the stars you should be seeing over there because the sun isn't also doing a big orbity thingy while you're going around it because, for fuck's sake, the complicated bullshit you'd have to believe for that to happen. It's bad enough having a fucking moon going around the earth while you're going around the sun while it's spinning on its axis. But throw in the sun and the stars. Holy shit. You see the same stars every night of the year. But when you're here, facing there, compared to here, facing there, how can you see the same stars? Are you really, seriously, that stupid? Urgh. I don't know if I'm going to even bother with the diagrams now. I bought a pen and I was going to draw some pictures, but... Seriously, if you can't see it from there... A clock measures the time. The time is what we measure. For the day and a day is one orbit of our little apple until our little dot we're on is 12 p.m. facing the sun we don't use a sundial to measure the time I don't know how many times I have to say that this bloody Greek guy who decided the earth was round by measuring the angle of the sun at the time he was here where the sun shone straight down and didn't cast a shadow at midday and he got his mate 500 miles away to measure it at the same time. Duh. Time is local. It's 100% local if you're measuring it by the sun. So to measure midday here 
500 miles away in midday here. At the same time, I mean, she basically have to have instantaneous communication, like, say, a mobile phone or a walkie-talkie or satellites. <laughs> satellites. <laughs> Don't get me started on satellites. I'll go into satellites shortly. But to measure shadows at the same time from one geographical location to another means you have to be able to communicate with one another. Okay, I am measuring now. Okay, I am measuring now. But no, I'll just measure it at 12 o'clock. Hell, I know it's 12 o'clock. I'll look at my sundial. 500 miles away in ancient Greece. Yeah, that's, that's science. That's the science that people still believe in, in today. That the Earth is a ball spinning on its axis faster than the speed of sound, going around the sun on an annual trip while the stars remain the same and midday is still in the middle of the day when it should be in the middle of the night six months after it's in the middle of the day satellites let's talk about satellites i love satellites satellites are one of my favorite fucking imaginary things anti-gravity wow that's pretty special they should make aeroplanes out of the same thing they make satellites out of. That would be really cool, because think about it. They can circumnavigate the whole globe in 90 minutes. That's why you see them whizzing from horizon to horizon in less than 10 minutes. That makes the Earth a lot smaller. But anyway, that's the theory. But... They're geostationary, <laughs> so they don't. They just spin with us as we spin. Oh, uh, geostationary and orbiting, come on, one or the other. No, 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 satellites can do both. They're fucking clever. And not only are they anti-gravity devices moving at thousands of miles an hour to keep up with us, or even more thousands of miles an hour to orbit us at 90 minutes they withstand these extreme temperatures that no known materials can withstand they withstand these speeds they're always self illuminating because they look like bright lights as they come through the night time they don't need fuel because they just got some solar panels and some really cool batteries and you know just some little jetty thingies that work off magic fuel that never needs replenishing mm. and and they're full of supercomputers that can make our mobile phones work and GPS and all this but it always cuts out when you're not within range of a tower hmm. satellites perpetual motion yeah well in satellites it's every day no worries and they just get this. This is what I had a guy telling me the, me the other day is that they're also falling as they're... So they're basically falling around the Earth, around the Earth in orbit because they're also moving because, you know, the force of momentum or... I can't even think of the term at the moment. It's just too ludicrous but aeroplanes on the other hand why don't they use that technology in aeroplanes they could go around the whole world in 90 minutes and you wouldn't even feel it inside it because the atmosphere is still still according to this speeding train theory guy dude so but the trouble is they would never land because they just keep falling around the earth faster than they can get sucked in by gravity like the moon does of course because it's in this beautiful beautiful balance of falling and spinning and moving away at the same time seriously every single thing you gotta believe in your head to make one of these things work contradicts the other thing and so your head is full of this educated knowledge which is garbage 
<laughs> Absolute garbage. There are no satellites. I don't know what the moon is. Don't even ask me about that because I don't believe in the moon. I believe it's garbage. That's why people go crazy thinking about it. That's why they're called lunatics because when you really consider the moon to be this big spinning ball going around, this even bigger spinning ball, which is going around an even bigger spinning flaming ball of gas. And that's why I thought I'd lift the lid on these little puppies. Don't ask me why. I just thought I'd get them because they look cool. I thought they might be good to meditate with. Yeah. I don't know. They look a bit anti-gravity to me. Oh, because it's biking. Cool, that's... Anyway, I'm going to talk more about them later. Spinning ball. Going around the sun. Looking at the same stars every night. Seriously, you globe heads. Get your act together and come up with a decent explanation for an atmosphere and a vacuum. Gravity that is only a weak force, gases can escape it up to a point where gravity becomes less and less, and then all of a sudden the mass of the gases is attracted to the gravity, but it doesn't give a shit about it when it's right down near the centre of gravity. That's your explanation for an atmosphere in a vacuum.